Okay, madam, we are live on YouTube. Yeah. Uh, so a warm welcome to all of you to this interesting session on saline infusion sonography. Uh, so I think uh, this is uh, one of the uh, very interesting topics which will be done in this uh, masterclass series. Uh, so I took a poll uh, in the afternoon today and majority of our uh, members in uh, the groups across India, uh, not even like 10% of them are doing uh, uh, SIS, that is uh, sonohistrography or uh, saline infusion sonography. So this will be an eye opener for uh, many people because majority of them are uh, still doing HSTs. Even a week ago, I mean, I was doing HSGs, but after uh, Dr. J put up the uh, saline infusion sonography video, I think one, one of those days in the last week, we did around five cases and I can vouch that uh, this is going to be a game changer in uh, table evaluation for all of you who are watching this uh, session today. Yeah, over to you, sir. Yeah, uh, I agree about that game changer part. Okay. Because see, remember, uh, the most important problem, okay, if you ever consider tubal evaluation from the patient perspective, okay, it is not if the tube is open or closed, okay, it is pain while doing the procedure. So if you, if Shilpa Madam could have taken a poll on YouTube, okay, that how many of you think HSG or SSG is a painful procedure, all right, uh, out of 100, maybe 98 of the women would have answered that we have heard from our friends that it is a very painful procedure, which is why we don't want to do the procedure. Okay. So is there some other way of evaluating it? Right. So I'm going to be sharing very, very simple things uh, about the SSG protocol, which we do. So we've been doing, uh, I think close to thousand so saline infusion sonographies in a year. All right. And we've been doing that since the past maybe five to six years at least. Okay. I also want to tell you guys that we are one of the most expensive people as far as doing saline infusion sonography is concerned. For almost every patient, we charge around 10,000 rupees for doing this procedure. All right. Uh, yeah. Some, some people opened their mouth right now. But yes, we do that. Okay. And uh, so the obvious question is that why is it so expensive? How on earth do you charge so much? And uh, what are the benefits as compared to HSG, hysterosalpingography? Uh, sal uh, right? So just one thing, remember. This is the only procedure, saline infusion sonography, which you can do in your own OPD as a basic ultrasound setup. Definitely for doing HSG, you need an X-ray counter machine. There is no question about that. You need to have an X-ray technician. You need to have a die. You need to hold on to the cervix. You need to put a screw cannula inside the cervix. You need to push it and then your technician should be able to shoot it onto the plate. And then once the plate comes to you, either you or your radiologist would report it. I do not deny the fact that HSG is a good procedure. I am not denying that fact. Okay. The game and the argument between HSG and SSG is like choosing between a, a Mercedes and a Porsche. Both are fantastic cars. Both are going to drive very well. Okay. Mercedes is something which is at a particular price range, but then Porsche is Porsche, right? It is just like that. Okay. So that is the only difference when it comes to doing HSG versus SSG. All right. And I'm going to take you through some very, very simplistic uh, steps, how you can do it in your own OPD. This lecture is only going to be based on that. And I'm going to cover such beautiful practical points, no diagrams to be drawn as a part of this session, I think, or very limited diagrams I'll be drawing. I'm just going to be explaining. Okay. So what is the first thing and what are the indications which we have for doing a tubal evaluation, basically? Any patient with primary infertility, any patient with secondary infertility, any patient where male factor parameters are normal, unexplained infertility, you can list them down, you know. But basically, everything with fertility will require tubal evaluation as long as you are planning natural intercourse, timed intercourse or IUI, okay. You may choose to not do it in IVF, okay. You may choose to not do it 
but you are going to do some evaluation of the tube even in IVF because you want to rule out hydrosalpics. All right. Fine. This is the first thing. Second thing. Do you require any special consent to do saline infusion sonography? So we have a procedure specific consent and uh, I'm going to be sharing if everybody wants it, I can share it on our WhatsApp channel. You can just download it from there and start using it in your practice from tomorrow morning. Okay. Third, what is it, uh, you know, the instrumentation that you need to have in uh, in your setup for doing a saline infusion sonography. So basically you need a simple grayscale ultrasound machine. You can even do it on a portable ultrasound machine as long as this ultrasound machine has a trans vaginal probe and a trans abdominal probe. Okay. So I'm going to come to the importance of trans abdominal probe a little later. There are going to be some people who will say that no, you also need color Doppler settings and uh, for very basic machines where you don't have color Doppler settings, I'm going to teach you a technique when I speak where you can simply eliminate the color Doppler completely. All right. Fine. So that is your ultrasound requirements. Do you need the patient to be on any particular day of the period in order to do saline infusion sonography? The answer is no, you don't need it because you are putting saline and saline is a dynamic medium inside. You can evaluate the cavity dynamically. Preferably try to not do it in the second half of the cycle if the couple is already trying for pregnancy. Any time in the follicular phase of the cycle, it is going to be absolutely fine. All right. So don't worry about that as well. What are the other special instruments that you need? So you need the most expensive Cusco speculum. Okay. Try to use a Cusco speculum, which is going to be having a long length of the shaft so that you can put the Cusco speculum irrespective of the size of the vagina. All right. We don't use sim speculum for this. I'm talking of what I use. I use the Cusco speculum. There are people who use two sim speculum and they are also very happy. Okay. Then comes the question. How will you, you know, do you use a specific saline infusion sonography or an SSG catheter or do you use a Foley's catheter? Okay. See, one of the problems which we typically encounter in HSG is cervical stenosis at the time of entry. Okay. And many a times our radiologist or our colleague will report it. Are yaar, bohati tight tha. Patient was having too much pain and this pain causes spasm, which will give you a false negative uh, bilateral proximal block report. Okay. But uh, there are three options here. So one, you can use the SSG catheter. It is available very commonly. You can ask any vendor less than 200 rupees. If you don't want to use that because the SSG catheter doesn't have a bulb inside. Okay. It doesn't have an inflatable bulb inside. It just has a blocker at the external loss. All right. So you can use that if you want to use. Second, very simple. You can use a pediatric foley's. All right. This pediatric foley's is almost going to be available with every chemist. It is beautiful. It, when it goes in inside, it, this pediatric foley is small, no? So it had the, has that rigid plastic thing inside. You know, once the catheter goes inside the cavity, you can just pull it out. All right. One of the best ways to put all these things is when you do a transvaginal probe inside, you assess if the uterus is antiverted or retroverted. Okay. And just put the foley very simply, it will go. Now, just in case the internal loss is pinpoint, it is very, very simple what you are supposed to do. Take a dilator or take your uterine sound, you know, paste some jelly over it, pass the sound through the cavity. Okay, locks jelly. What I mean is lignocaine jelly. I don't mean the standard jelly. Pass a ultras, pass the uterine sound through the uterus. You will come to know automatically. Os will open up a little. Okay, and you will be able to pass the Foley's catheter through this. How much are you supposed to inflate the bulb? We never exceed 2 cc. Okay, never, we never exceed 2 cc, 2, that's it, okay, 2 cc. Okay, I'll tell you the reason why, because this allows the bulb to be as close to the internal os as possible. And when you are pushing the saline, it gives you a much more beautiful dynamic 3D assessment of the entire cavity. Okay, so that is why we keep it at 2 cc, we never exceed that. Okay, you can even keep it at 1.5 cc, that's also going to be fine, to be honest with you. All right. Now comes a case where you are unable to put the pediatric foley's also. You are unable, you don't even have the SSG catheter. Now what? Okay. Simple. In all these situations, you can put the embryo transfer catheter. 
okay this embryo transfer catheter is something which will beautifully go inside the cervix nobody dilates the internal loss at the time of embryo transfer embryo transfer catheter goes inside embryo transfer catheter has a sonolucent tip so it will stay at the internal loss it has a small plunger which will obliterate the external loss okay and if everything fails you can use the embryo transfer catheter so do you actually push the fluid through the embryo transfer catheter no embryo transfer catheter has an outer catheter and an inner catheter now through this you pass the inner catheter and push everything through the inner catheter my god the delineation will be absolutely fantastic trust me okay so then comes what other preparation do you do in order to alleviate the pain of the patient all right so it's very simple see as a rule we do saline infusion sonographies without the presence of an anesthetist okay we never call our anesthetist for doing this procedure second we give one tablet of piraxicam sublingual around 5 minutes before 10 minutes before maximum doing this procedure we always give atropine to the patient before doing the procedure because sometimes when you hold on to the lips of the cervix patient can develop a vasovagal attack okay so we do that after doing all these things it is important that once the patient is positioned in lithotomy position we are going to give table a little head low this head low is going to be a 10 degree head low to the table not more than that okay automatically what this 10 degree head low does is some amount of antiverted antiflex uterus will become mid position okay and your catheters will go in very easily retroflex will say retroflex only mid position will say mid position only but most common uterus in nulliparous women is antiverted antiflex okay it will become slightly mid position and your thing will go in easily do you need to have a half filled bladder for doing all these things it is completely optional okay even if you have a you know some amount of urine collected in the bladder there is no problem as far as doing ssg is concerned it doesn't really distort the cavity in any manner okay so now comes what do you use to distend the cavity okay what is your infusion medium so our infusion medium we have shared it it is very very simple 20 cc saline 2 cc locks 2 percent jelly. Everything is two. 20 cc saline, 2 ml, 2 percent locks jelly. Okay, just mix it in a sterile bowl, small bowl. You know, the whole thing will form a nice little paste. There will be small, small, small bubbles also which have formed inside it, which will be beautifully sonolucent. The great advantage with this is when you pass. this as an distension medium in the uterine cavity because it is a jelly with lignocaine as soon as it comes in contact with the cornual ends where the spasm is more okay it will allow for good amount of nice comfortable slow acting local anesthesia topical application okay i think shilpa madam mentioned in the session at the starting that she was doing hsgs for a long period of time and after listening to us she started doing ssgs the i don't know if the tubes were patent or not but the greatest difference you will find is that the patient will have an absolutely pain free experience when you do this no patient will do cha chu chi ha u nothing okay patient will be watching on the screen as if some movie is going on okay what size of syringe you need to push we need to push it through a 20 cc syringe do you need to push it slowly or fastly push it fastly because you want it to spill out through the tube and when you want it to spill out through the tube you need to observe the spillage which is occurring okay this spillage is unmistakable i mean un even if if you have the highest degree of cataract in your eyes no you will still see you will still see this nobody should laugh okay you will still see this spillage okay trust me you cannot miss out on this spillage it is something which is so evident do you need to add a doppler in this entire situation okay the answer is very simple you don't need to add a doppler because the problem with doppler is okay this is not a very specific window where you are trying to observe the spillage so when you add a doppler even if there is movement of fluid inside the fallopian tube it will appear as something is moving and coming out okay 
So that is one thing which is important. We almost always add a 3D once the saline has gone in the uterine cavity. And it is beautiful to delineate polyps. It is beautiful to delineate cornual polyps as well, which will otherwise get missed out. It is beautiful to delineate intrauterine adhesions. Okay. So these are the things which are important. Now comes certain, uh, yeah, obviously the probe is TVS. I mean, you are testing this on a TVS thing. Okay. We are going to show you a video. Just hold on. All right. What is going to happen in certain challenging situations? So I'm going to show you a challenging situation today. I came to know about uh, this session today in the morning. Okay. So when I came to know uh, today in the morning, I really did not have anybody who was posted for an SSG today. So I actually took care of one hysterectomy patient. I convinced her to do an SSG. For this hysterectomy I have shown live also today. Huh? Ventrofixed uterus. So I am going to play that video. Okay. Uh, for saline infusion sonography. Okay. Both the fallopian tubes are beautifully blocked. No need to worry. Okay. I will show that. See. And then Shilpa Madam will... Uh, one minute. I shall share the screen. And then Shilpa Madam will also share the screen because she has something which has open tubes. Okay. Yeah. See, this is your pediatric Foley's catheter inside. Can you see the distension? Yeah. It is a large adenomyotic uterus. But can you see the beautiful distension inside the cavity which is occurring? Now, this distension inside the cavity, cavity is, I told you, no. Saline infusion sonography is so beautiful that even if I blind your eyes, no, give you the best possible cataract, you will still see it. See, even if I blind your eyes and if I force you to believe, no, like how we are forced to believe in our post-graduation in gynecology. See, there is the ureter. Poor postgraduate in first year will always say, ha, madam ne dikhaya, so the ureter hi hoenga. Here, nobody will agree to me if I say there is a spill. You will not agree only. You will be like, kya jhut bolta hai? You know, the reason is, See, this was a ventrofixed uterus. Ovaries were slightly abnormally placed. And we tried to push the dye inside and not even a millimeter okay, has come outside. So it is a simple report. Both the tubes are blocked. Nothing can be done about it. And because nothing could be done about it, the lady has completed her family. So we also don't really have to worry. Her hysterectomy is already finished Okay, for this lady. I would simultaneously request uh, Dr. Shilpa to also share screen and show a normal video because she has taken a normal video today. Madam, can you share the video? Yeah, yeah, just one second. So I'll try and explain. Uh, so this is uh, what we use. This is the tray. I mean, uh, see, we do, uh, I have done five in the last uh, uh, last seven days. This is uh, a 20 ml saline where we'll be adding the jelly. This is, we assume it is 2 cc uh, xylocaine jelly and uh, uh, we mix it. So the we have only 10, uh, the 10 cc syringe here. So that is the pediatric police. We have a bitted in uh, solution. And uh, then uh, we have the whole towel, all that. So I I use the same speculum. I hold the cervix also because I'm more comfortable that way. Uh, and uh, this is the pediatric Foley's number eight. Uh, uh, there is a guide wire uh, in there and uh, we take it out. Uh, I inflate it with uh, two to three cc. Usually I uh, it will spill out. So I inject it but it's actually only two. So then uh, we see that the uh, bulb is inflated in the uterine cavity. Uh, so here uh, you can see that there is, uh, uh, we just sweep the, the vaginal probe from uh, one end to the other end laterally. And here you can see that there is slight, uh, mm, yeah, see, the, the cavity is distending and then uh, the, see this is quite new for us. So we are a little struggling here. So here this is the, uh, here you can see the lumen uh, coming out uh, the saline with uh, the uh, little particles which are uh, coming out. So 
but the problem here is like you know the thing that i had a problem was the side where it was not patent or uh, i could not say that both the sides were uh, uh, patent enough i mean that was the problem that we had in the last uh, uh, two cases so in few cases we could see a nice fimbria which is like you know uh, where the fluid was coming out but uh, in few cases we could see lot of uh, fluid in the pod and i have switched on doppler also here so here you can see that the blush what they call when i suddenly like push the uh, the line forcibly you can see that the flow comes out so this is uh, something called uh, blush which my associate dr sharanya uh, wanted to uh, show it to everyone this is one of uh, the video here uh, so you can see that so in all the five cases which i did all five were patent tubes so this, this is the the um, the jelly which is floating along with the saline that you are able to see so it's actually a, quite a significant uh, finding which cannot be missed because of these particles which are there and uh, also we i used only 20 cc which was mentioned see here you can see the pod is completely filled with the uh, uh, saline with uh, the particles so uh, yeah i am actually done in case uh, so shall i ask you questions or do you want to no, say no, any no 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 so uh, normally the biggest confusion which people have is that people think that they want to do only trans abdominal scan okay in order to check both the fallopian tubes at one time don't do that all right there are going to be certain instances where you are going to have a situation that the fallopian tubes are not actually in the pelvis the fallopian tubes are located at, at the level of the pelvic rib okay in that situation your trans abdominal probe should go into the respective paracolic gutter okay to check for spillage inside the paracolic gutter you will see that as well there is no problem in seeing that sometimes you will have already fluid which is present in the pouch of douglas okay when you already have fluid in the pouch of douglas then you are going to wonder are how will i come to know you know uh, where this fluid is coming from in that situation the simplest maneuver which you can do is instead of pushing the jelly after you first push the jelly the second what you can do is push just air through it air will just cause bubbles to come inside that so you will know which side of the fallopian tube is leaking out those bubbles okay and it is a beautiful thing you will observe it very very nice all right third don't have any sort sort of stupid concept in your head that if you are putting lignocaine jelly inside the fallopian tube it will cause a mucus plug to form come on i mean that is just too far fetched a thought you know might as well the tube with its peristalsis will throw that mucus plug out okay take it that way in fact it is a hsg or ssg which is known to clear up the small mucus plugs which are present inside the fallopian tubes and often you would have seen in your long practice that people have become pregnant just after doing hsg people have become pregnant just after doing ssg why is it happened because that little mucus plug which was present no it got dislodged so okay that is one of the reasons why people actually become pregnant after doing these procedures okay does the patient at the end of the procedure need any form of painkillers or antibiotics the answer is no do we have to give printed images or a video of this entire procedure the answer is you have to give printed images where you can see the dye spilling out you don't really have to give any video to any patient for this particular thing okay so with this i think i finish almost everything related to an ssg if there are questions we shall be happy to answer them for the next 2 to 3 minutes we do not recommend adding any antibiotic in normal saline plus lox jelly we don't recommend it okay yeah so you said you do 3d for all patients at the end of uh, yeah. uh, okay and uh, uh, this uh, have you used this galactose micro bubbles like uh, hycosai no. is it in india no, i have not used it okay so uh, see i mean i have done hsgs for such a long time and uh, i have been doing ssgs so for hsg the patient would stay in the hospital for almost like you know an hour 
because of the pain, cramps and all yeah. such. So you pyroxicam as you said. So, but for SSGs that I did, I mean, I did not use uh, any of those, uh, uh, the even the painkillers also, but the patient was like, you know, fine. There is actually no need to use any painkillers, honestly. Okay, we we are using it just for hypersensitive patients, you know, and as a part of protocol, one tablet to be given. As I said, it is such a simple thing that, you know, post the procedure, patient just walks back to office or home. No antibiotics, no painkillers at the end of the procedure. All right. We also don't do mixing of any dexamethasone in the saline. We don't do anything. It is just saline with, it's why do you want to add complications? You are not putting a culture media inside the fallopian tube. Okay. It is just 20 cc along with 2 cc of lox jelly. Finished. Okay. It is absolutely simple. The other thing, lot of people have this misconception that when I do HSG, no, patient has permanent records and HSG, all doctors can interpret equally well. Okay. It is not like that. If you do SSG, SSG is also interpreted equally well by doctors who are doing it. See, majority of the people don't do it because they don't know how to do it. Second, they don't want to do it on their own only. And third, they think that HSG radiologist is doing it, why do I send it You know, something like that. But if more, more, more people start doing it, it is so simple. You don't even have to pass that gas, put that stethoscope on the abdomen. All that is all antique pieces. Okay. It is so beautiful, this saline. It will just spill and you will see it here. So should the saline be warmed? Uh, pre -warmed, you do that? No. no these are uh, questions from someone. Okay. So you said it has to be pushed uh, a little fast. So that we can see the spill. Uh, but over how many minutes or anything, or you just push it? I'll calculate it tomorrow and tell. How do you prevent the backflow? I used an artery to clamp, uh, and then I used. Uh, how did so you, you use a screw cannula over that pediatric Foley's head and then okay. push it through it? Nothing will happen. It will stay in that screw cannula. Okay, okay, okay. So you use max 20 ml, uh, is it? No, or no, not. madam. If you want to use 40, you know, you can use 40 also. But what typically happens, the more fluid you add, no. If the tubes are patent, there is more fluid coming in the pouch of Douglas. Then over more and more fluid, it becomes difficult for you only to interpret which tube was open, which tube was closed. Okay. Have you noticed any complications uh, because you have done so many? Yet to see. Okay. Don't worry. This is not going to cause tubal rupture. Nothing like this happens. It is going to go from the uterus, which is myometrium inside the fallopian tube. Okay. You are not doing uh, injection of saline in the fallopian tube that it will rupture. Okay. Nothing like that happens here. Okay. So, so people are saying that reproducibility is diff difficult, but I don't think so. See that day. I mean, we, we took one procedure and then we were pros, you know, I mean, uh, we were really finding it very easy because I think people who are worried about reproducibility should only comment after doing 25 procedures. Okay. So vasovagal attack, uh, have you had any patients? We always give atropine, madam. Hmm. So TAS, you have explained. IUI cannula, can it be used? Up to you. Use anything. You but can use a straw also, as long as it is in the cavity. You just need something from outer cavity to inner cavity. Okay. And then that has to be blocked so that there is no backflow. Use whatever you want. So that's about it, I think. How much will I charge? I told I'll charge 10,000 rupees and above. Atropine no. dose. What is the standard dose of atropine? It is the same dose available here. One vial is 0 0.5. Mm -hmm. I don't use HSG cannula. No, even if the tubes are blocked, it doesn't really cause any problem. If the tubes are blocked, the dye will, I mean, the spill will not come. Okay. It is so simple, no? 
what do you want to know about the TAS probe? We already explained. Don't use the transabdominal probe for measuring the spill. Use transabdominal probe only and only if the spill is happening above the pelvic brim and put it in the paracolic gutters. Simple. That's it. I think we are done. We are good. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. It was excellent. So when the internal loss is uh, wide open, so that time we can clamp an alice or something to block it, right? But to prevent the... You are, you are putting balloon, no? 2cc. That 2cc balloon will clamp the internal loss. In 2cc, what pain you will have here while inflating the bulb to 2cc? There is no pain. So when you, of course, when you have cuscos, putting the vaginal probe is difficult. After the foley goes inside, take the cuscos out and put the vaginal probe. Yeah. No, I don't know if locks can be added to urographin to reduce the pain in HSG. I really don't know. And this beaded appearance, which people are talking about, no? We will have a beautiful lecture on beaded appearance of tubes on HSG. Okay. It, uh, people, what do you do when there is a beaded appearance? You are going to put a diagnostic laparoscopy. Are you going to look at that HSG report and start patients on AKT? No. You are not going to do all those things. So, let's not discuss uh, you know, theory which was published in 1922. Okay. Of course, 3D is useful. You can delineate the cavity so beautifully. I strongly recommend people to put 3D once and see. Okay. All these doubts you have, no, it will disappear. Just put 3D once. Trust me. It is so beautiful. It is so beautiful that you are going to love the 3D being inside there. Everything you will put a 3D next time onwards. This 3D appearance, once the saline goes inside, it is that beautiful. Believe me. Sure. Okay. Thank you so much. It was excellent. Yeah. Thank you very much.